Hello everyone, good day, and welcome to today's presentation, an introduction to quantile measures. Uh, thank you so much for taking the time to be here today. Today, uh, my name is Cyan Bastions, and I'm on the training and outreach team at ETS, and I'm joined by some colleagues here uh, who are going to be uh, helping us behind the scenes. Uh, today's presentation is brought to you by the California Department of Education, or CDE, as well as ETS and Metametrics, which are the creators of the Lexile framework for reading and the Quantile framework for mathematics. So I'm just going to give a few housekeeping items, and then I will pass it over to our partners at Metametrics. Um, so the slides that you're looking at currently are available on the upcoming and on-demand trainings webpage under the Training and Communication tab on the CASP and LPAC website. Um, all the URLs that will be mentioned today can also be accessed through a uh, through the PowerPoint slides that are posted, as well as the resource guide that's posted along with the PowerPoint. So I'm just about to pop that into the chat for you to access. Um, for today, uh, we will be recording this webinar and it'll be available soon. It usually takes about five to seven business days, and it'll also be available on that same web page, the upcoming and on-demand trainings web page. And then it'll also be posted on the CASP and LPAC YouTube channel. So again, today's recording is uh, will be available and we have the materials available. Um, please feel free to disseminate this material to any other administrators or educators that you think would have an interest in this information or benefit from it. Um, and lastly, today, the chat is going to be closed. We'll just use it to send out links and um, some information with you just a few times. Um, but if you have any questions, we do have the Zoom question and answer feature open. So go ahead and use that Q&A tool, uh, add your questions there. We'll start to answer them uh, throughout the training and um, throughout the webinar. And we'll probably focus on the topics or the questions at hand that are on topic. And then if there's any other additional questions, we'll get to them at the end. So with that being said, I'll pass it over to Mandy from Metametrics. Great, thank you, Cyan. Uh, I'm really happy to be here with all of you today. Thank you guys for taking time out of your day. I know it's hard at the end of a workday, um, but we're, we're happy to come together to talk with you today about the quantile framework. So um, my role is that I'm the Senior Director of State Partnerships at Metametrics, and I have the pleasure of working with not only ETS and the state of California and all of you, but many other states um, around the country as well. I guess a little bit about my background before we get started. Um, I started out in uh, middle school math, being a teacher for middle, middle school math students as an educator, and then unexpectedly moved into K-12 uh, assessment space. I don't know if I thought I would stay there, but I, I did end up remaining there for the last 25 years. And so I've really had the privilege of working with uh, state departments of education, districts of all sizes, large and small, and educators all across the country, um, assisting them with the implementation of assessment programs and really making the data actionable in the classroom for educators. And so that's what we're here to talk about today. I, we really want to take some time to talk about the quantile measures that are uh, produced from the quantile framework and how those can be really meaningful in instruction and for students. And that's our goal here today. So just real quickly, Cyan's already gone over sort of all the administrative things, but I will let you know, I will pause probably three times throughout the presentation so that Cyan can see if there's any relevant questions to the sec sections that we've talked about, and I'm happy to answer those, and then um, we'll save all the other ones for the end of the presentation. All right, so just to get started, let's quickly go through the agenda of what we'll be covering today. We're gonna to start just kind of with the big picture, talking a little bit, making sure everyone has a common understanding of how the quantile framework was built, uh, what it represents, and how quantile measures are received for students and how quantile measures are placed on math materials. I think often most people are familiar with the Lexile framework, but the quantile framework seems to fall a little bit under the radar where I find educators don't know as much about it. So that, that's what we're here to do today is make sure we have a common understanding. From there, we're gonna talk about how these quantile measures can be used uh, not only to inform instruction and differentiate instruction in the classroom, but really to help monitor student progress and growth towards college and career readiness. And then we definitely wanna make sure that everyone here leaves knowing that the hub is a place that Metametrics and uh, ETS and CDE provide that gives you access to free tools and resources, all to help use these quantile and Lexile measures in the classroom and with families. So we wanna make sure you know how to access the hub and that you learn a little bit about the types of tools and resources that are available there for you at no cost. 
Um, if you did happen to miss yesterday's presentation on Lexile, as Cyan said, there's a recording that's available um, on the upcoming and on demand web training page that'll be available in a few days along with the recording from this. So if that sounds interesting and you missed it, um, you can always catch both of these recordings there. All right, so let's dive in. Um, I always like to start just by setting the stage to, to talk about the fact that over 45 million students nationwide across the US are actually receiving Lexiles and Quantile measures throughout all 50 states. Um, there's additional students even receiving these measures internationally, but that's a large volume of students um, receiving these measures, not only on end of year assessments, but also on interim assessments. So we're gonna talk about that a little bit because there's two main ways that students receive these measures. And the first is from those end of year summative assessments. And so just like here in California where students take the CASP or the California Assessment of Student Performance and Progress, um, Metametrics can link the quantile framework to that end of year math assessment so that quantile measures are reported out right alongside scale scores. And it works similarly for Lexiles. The other way that students can receive measures is through benchmark or interim assessments or even some curriculum programs where there's also a psychometric link back to these frameworks. So then those interim assessments that students may take maybe beginning, middle and end of year are also reporting out quantile measures for students. So because of that, you can see students actually have the opportunity to possibly receive these measures anywhere from one to four times per year. So one of the things that I really like to kind of stress is that Metametrics has a really firm belief that we don't need more assessments in K-12 space. There's plenty of assessments. There's lots of testing going on out there. Uh, and so that's why at the foundation of what Metametrics does is their belief is to take these frameworks, the Lexile or Quantile, and link these frameworks to existing assessments so that the scores can be reported out from testing that's already taking place. And so there's actually no such thing as a quantile test. There's no such thing as a lexile test. And I think that tends to be sort of a, a belief that a lot of people have, and it makes sense why people would think that. But I always like to clarify that there's no additional testing that has to take place for students to receive these scores because of the unique manner in which these frameworks are linked to pre-existing assessments. So if you're interested in knowing if maybe at your district, one of the interim assessments or curriculum programs that you might be using or your district or school might be using, if you'd like to know if they're actually linked and reporting quantiles, um, we're going to provide you with a URL that will link you to that complete list so you can see if any programs you're using are on that list. And that link will be available in your resource guide. Okay, so we just talked about the fact that the CASP, the California Assessment of Student Performance and Progress, is linked to the quantile framework, and that's for grades three through eight and grade 11. And so primarily, those measures are reported out on the student score reports that are available, you know, once those scores are released from testing. Now, on those student score reports, there is also a link to the hub. And we'll, we'll talk about the hub later in this presentation, and I'll share that link with you. But I think it's important to know that on that student score report, there's more than just the quantile and luxile measure being uh, reported. They're providing a link to the hub so that families and parents can also access the hub to gain background information that they can read and review to understand what these measures are about, or also to access tools that we'll talk about, like find a book that can help a family, you know, match a resource, whether that be a math or reading resource to a student's ability to really allow for more effective communication between school and home. Now, in addition to those student score reports, um, there's also the URL for the hub when we're talking about educators and how all of you would access the hub. You can go there directly and I'll show you that later, but there's also a URL that you can or a link that you can click on from the Tom system or from the resource tab within the CASP and LPAC website. So we try to make it easy for you to get to the hub and you can access there from a variety of different um, portals and locations. Um, it's important to point out this was last year in school year 23-24, but in case some of you are not aware, we just wanted to really emphasize that these um, Lexile and Quantile measures are also reported for all students now who take the ICAs or the interim comprehensive assessments for either ELA or mathematics. 
And so these uh, measures are available. Um, once the measures are released, they're available in the SERS reporting system. And we're going to take a look. Let me click to the slide. I know it's small and maybe hard to see, but we wanted to just share a screenshot of um, when you're in SERS trying to request this data. It's important to just make sure under the Select a Results View dropdown that you either select Quantile Report, and that's a report, as you can see here, that will include the Quantile Measure and a corresponding Quantile Range for a given student. Um, and then likewise, you can request a Lexile Report as well. Um, now, this data is also available in TOMS for the summative assessments once that data is released, but we wanted to make sure you knew how to uh, access it in SERS as well. Okay, I'm going to pause there and see at this point if there's any questions related to how to access the measures, because that's first and foremost important that everybody knows. How do you get these measures? How do you um, look at them for your students? So it doesn't look like we have anything in the Q&A just yet, um, okay. but I did just want to take a moment to clarify. It looks like folks are receiving a 404 for the uh, to download today's slides. I just wanted to give an update that we're pushing an update to the website right now to fix that, but I've added a link uh, into the chat that will allow you to directly download today's slides. And okay. I'm still not seeing anything in the Q&A, so I think we can move on to the next section, Mandy. Great. Okay, thanks. Thank you for that. So I'd like to transition here a little bit and talk about the quantile framework itself. So I'd like to set a baseline for talking about how this framework was developed and the types of measures that are reported from the framework. This framework does work much like the Lexile framework, if you're more familiar with that one, where these are measures that are really helpful to not just teachers, educators, but also families and students. So you can kind of lean on your knowledge from the Lexile framework, but maybe listen in for some of the key differences that I'll try to point out. So one of the things, you know, teachers can use these measures in the classroom to help differentiate their instruction. They can also use these measures to really start to, I'll say the measures along with some of the tools, to really start to unpack the standards that they're teaching, get a deeper understanding of the skills involved in those standards and the complexity of them with the quantile measure, and then be able to compare that complexity to the readiness of the students that they have either in a group, individually or in a classroom setting. So it's really helping teachers to kind of bridge that understanding between student readiness and complexity of material that they're teaching. And we'll, we're gonna talk more about how to do that. For students, these measures can be really powerful in driving motivation for the student. You know, these are measures students can kind of get behind themselves. I've seen numerous classrooms throughout California where there's bulletin boards where teachers will put up um, almost like a thermometer where students can chart their progress along the quantile scale and show their growth and progress that they're making, which is really exciting for kids to be able to be empowered by kind of taking ownership of their own learning, but also striving towards college and career readiness. So we'll talk a little bit later in the presentation how Metametrics has a lot of research tied to Bright Outlook careers um, that where we know the mathematical readiness, the demands of certain careers at a quantile level. So students can actually use our career database to look up careers they're interested in, find out what the mathematical demand of that career is, and then use that as a goal to drive motivation. So lots of things that you can do with students to help them engage with their learning. In terms of families, these measures are really powerful for creating more effective communication. Um, I'll show you some of the tools later, or we'll talk about them that can be used to communicate with families. But anytime there's a measure that goes home on a student report that also gives families the ability to dive in and find resources to kind of bridge learning at home and at school, uh, that can be really effective to help that communication. All right, so let's talk a little bit about the framework. Um, at the heart of the framework, it's like a yardstick, right? Yardsticks, you know, they measure something. And that's what the quantile framework is doing. It's measuring something. But it's actually measuring two things at one time. And technically, at Metametrics, we call that a conjoined scale because it's measuring two things that seem pretty different, almost like Celsius and Fahrenheit on a thermometer, um, but on the same scale. And so the quantile framework is actually attempting to measure the complexity of math concepts, right, skills and concepts that make up a lot of lessons that you see in math, as well as students' understanding of those concepts and their readiness to learn new concepts. So let's kind of start by breaking this down and examining it a little bit. Um, 
If you can imagine for a minute that we took an entire body of math learning, and I was a math teacher, so I kind of, you know, if you can picture this with me, I assume a lot of you are as well. And you look at that body of learning from say like kindergarten all the way to 12th grade. There's, there's a, if you kind of teased out all the fragments of conceptual understanding, all those skills and concepts that are necessary, those building blocks along the way, you'd really build sort of this mathematical continuum. And these pieces of learning would look very much like grade level standards. But at Metametrics, we don't call them standards. We call them what you see on the screen, which is quantile skills and concepts. And Metametrics has sort of whittled down these key skills and concepts to a set of about 550. And each of these skills and concepts have been measured along the quantile framework continuum, and they've been given a difficulty value. So difficulty in relation to one another. So you can kind of picture that. And we have lots of visuals and maps and resources if you're really interested in learning more about how those skills lay out or how that research was done. Um, we have lots of information that we can provide um, if you reach out, if you're interested in some of the finer details. So just to give you an example, like say we have a skill like rounding whole numbers to the nearest place value, that might fall somewhere a, around a 400 Q, which stands for 400 quantile along the continuum. And then we can look at skills above and below that to see which ones are more or less difficult. So that's how we tend to look at individual skills and concepts. When you look at mathematical material, say that's part of a lesson, a worksheet, a video, um, you know, a chapter in a math textbook, those are typically comprised of several skills put together. And so when Metametrics analyzes mathematics materials, what they do is they tease out all of these skills and concepts that make up, let's say, that worksheet or that math video exercise. And they look at all those skills and concepts. And then the highest difficulty level skill is the difficulty of complexity placed on that particular lesson, or section of a, a teaching material or a video or whatever the material may entail. So just wanted to kind of separate their skills and concepts that are sort of rated, rated by difficulty along a continuum. And then those skills and concepts make up math lessons, which are then analyzed as a whole based on the skills and concepts that are part of them. Um, so it looks like there might be a question. I just wanted to pause if there was something relevant to the the yeah, run. I think we can address this. This is asking whether or not the quantile uh, number or quantile measurement is equivalent to a grade level or can it be measured in a way that maps directly to grade levels? So that's a great question. We had a similar question yesterday, I think, with Lexile. So the quantile measures are independent of grade level. There is not a specific quantile measure, you know, tied to a specific grade level. Um, when we look at the grade level charts and talk about those later in the hub, those grade level charts are based on national norm data. So there, there is data that's available in the hub to give some general guidance and perspective around where does, let's say, for example, the average fifth grader nationally, what's sort of a normal or average uh, quantile score for a fifth grader nationally? And so you can, you can look at that in the grade level chart and you can kind of get an understanding nationwide where typical measures seem to be for each grade level, but the measures themselves are not actually, you know, directly tied back to a particular grade level. Okay. All right. So we, we spoke for a minute about on this quantile framework and in the quantile scale, how we have measures for skills and then complexity measures placed on math materials, but then the scale also provides a quantile measure for students that talks about students' readiness for instruction. And this is one of the places I wanted to point out one of the differences and distinctions between the Lexile framework and the quantile framework. So on the Lexile side, if you were with us yesterday or you have familiarity, when we give a student a Lexile measure, when a student receives that from an assessment, we are talking about what the student is capable of doing independently. We're, we're talking about their independent reading ability, comprehension ability, because reading tends to be a very independent task and readers can still grow without a lot of teacher intervention sometimes just by continuing to engage in reading that is more and more complex. On the math side, it's a little different, right? Typically, I mean, we have high excelling students who probably can teach themselves. But for the most part, mathematics instruction requires the intervention of a teacher for the most part. And so when we talk about quantile measures for students, we're talking about 
their readiness for instruction on specific skills and concepts, and baseline knowledge that they most likely already have mastered to be ready for that next set of skills. So that's just an important distinction that we'd like to call out because the two scales, there is a little bit different interpretation of how the measures um, should be thought about. So this kind of gives you a nice visual of the quantile scale. And by no means, the values that you see here along this continuum, the, this is not an absolute bottom and an absolute top. There actually isn't a defined top and bottom to the scale because the more materials Metametrics analyzes, the more opportunity there is for material to be more complex. Um, you know, we do have sort of a ceiling that we tend to see. We don't see a lot of mathematics materials coming out a lot higher than like 14, 1500. Um, at least of the ones that have been analyzed up through sort of college level calculus. And so, and we do have some entry level um, career materials as well. But that's that college and career space tends to sit around 1300. And then you see more complex if they're careers that involve more complex materials, maybe in the 14 to 15. So just to kind of give you a sense of how high the scale goes, but we don't see a whole lot above that range. So what I wanted to point out here on this slide is that really sort of the innate value of this quantile framework and scale is that you can have a student as shown on the left, we can have a measure assigned to the student through an assessment that they've taken in this example, 840Q. And then you can have a skill that let's say a teacher has to teach in an upcoming lesson, maybe they're teaching volume of this figure. And when they look up that skill in the hub, they can see that 840Q is the complexity level assigned to this particular skill. So this now gives the teacher some additional information that may not have been available previously. You know, this educator now can look at that lesson, understand some of the skills that are involved in the lesson, be able to look at what the quantile or complexity level of those math skills entail, and then look at the readiness level of the student or group of students or class of students that they're about to teach that lesson to. And what that does is really inform the teacher from the perspective of being able to determine if some scaffolding, pre-teaching is needed, if some prerequisite work is needed. So in this case, this looks like a really great pairing, right? This student looks very ready to work on this skill. We're going to make the, the assumption that she has most of the prerequisite knowledge needed to be ready to learn this skill. But if she was sitting at more like a 600 Q, the teacher would really want to take a step back and, and work on some scaffolding or maybe do a little quiz to pre-test some of that prerequisite knowledge to see um, if there's a little bit of work that needs to be done so that this student can be more successful when it comes time to learn this skill. So from here, at the heart of the framework, we just kind of talked about these quantile skills and concepts are really what we consider the backbone of the framework. They really design that scale. But not only do these QSCs fall along this scale, what happens then is they become organized into knowledge clusters. And so again, if you think about math, there's a lot of knowledge clustering that goes on in terms of preparation for students to learn certain skills. So we can think about an example. Um, let me show you this picture. So if we think about something like, let's say the example is that I was going to teach um, the area of a circle. So let's say that's our QSC or our skill and concept number 257. The numbers don't mean anything to you, but we number them at Metametrics. So let's say this is work on area of a circle. Well, the pre some of the prerequisites for that might be do students understand the concept of pi and radius and circumference? You know, have they worked with those, um, those measures? And so do they have some of that necessary knowledge to be successful with calculating area? And then from there, some of the impending skills that would come after learning about area might be calculating area of a three-dimensional object. And that would be sort of that next level. It may even be in the next grade level that they learn that skill and concept. But knowing how to calculate area becomes foundational for those next impending skills. And so we think about this a little bit like, um, I think a, a really good like metaphor or description is to think about a tree. So you have all the roots of the trees, which are the prerequisites. You have the focus skill. And sometimes there's more than one focus skill, right? Sometimes there could be three or four that are part of a lesson. And then you have all the impending branches. And so as you can see, I mean, and, and I think in math, it, 
this is just very true. These are not one-to-one -one relationships, right? It's kind of one-to-many because a lot of these foundational skills are the building blocks for many other skills. So the reason that these quantile measures are so valuable, and I, I see this in the work I do with educators, and I, I watch them do this sometimes in front of me, they love to go into the hub so that they can really unpack the standards that they're teaching, look at what the focus skills are for the, the standards coming up next in their lessons, and then start to unpack and very quickly gain access to the prerequisites and the impending because it just gives them that knowledge to um, just have broader awareness of maybe possible scaffolding that they need to do with their students. I also have many other educators that work in um, like, let's say math groups across grade levels where they've started to use some of this to unpack and say, you know, we have kids reaching fifth grade and just continuously they're struggling with this particular standard or this particular concept. Maybe that's because somewhere along the line, they're missing the foundational prerequisites for that skill. So this unpacking can help um, cross grade level groups go back and sort of see where some of those gaps might be coming in and be able to make some very intentional instructional changes to hopefully then help remediate some of those areas where they might see some standards where kids are not meeting the expectations that they'd like to see. So the way that these skills are organized in the framework really allow for much more than just you know giving a student a math readiness value it's really powerful for the educator in preparing lessons and tailoring the instruction more to the students that they have in front of them so i kind of covered some of this already by going through that example talking a little bit about how you can really unpack and break down this material um because a lot of people will say to me, well, I have this math textbook I use. Well, some, some math materials have been analyzed. Lots of corporate partners send their materials to Metametrics to be analyzed. And sometimes you'll actually uh, be able to turn to a lesson page and you'll see a quantile measure for that lesson. If that happens to not be the case with materials that you're using, that's where you can go into the hub and just kind of take it back to the basic level of what standard am I teaching? what basic skills and concepts are foundational for the standard and what is the complexity level of those skills and how does that align to the students that I'm teaching. And so that's always how I guide teachers if the materials that you have in hand may not have quantile measures already reported on them. All right, at home, these measures we started talking about a little bit before, but it's a way to create communication with parents. Those grade level charts that we talked about are really helpful for using during parent-teacher conferences so that you can sit down and be able to sort of give parents a frame of reference um, about how kids are you know, doing nationally on their assessments and where kids are typically scoring in a given grade level and where their child is falling along that continuum. And then also being able to offer some resource support if a parent has an area that they'd like to help support their child with at home. Uh, this is the hub is great at finding resources that are in the quantile range of the student so that you're offering them resources that they can hopefully go home and possibly utilize on the computer or as a printed worksheet that would be in alignment with the child's current quantile measure. So just to kind of summarize before we shift to talking about the hub, um, I want to just talk about, you know, I think we've gone into a lot of detail, but this framework essentially helps educators to link student ability to the difficulty of the skills that you're teaching. It really helps us to forecast student success to really know, you know, what's going to happen when I teach this lesson? Are the kids going to be ready or not? And just having a little bit of knowledge ahead of time can mean all the world of difference when that lesson is taught obviously using that then to differentiate instruction and then tracking growth over time. So I don't think I've mentioned yet, but the fact that these measures are reported out in grades three to eight um, and grade 11, you know, this becomes a consistent measure over time that educators, students, and families have where they can really look at that longitudinal progress and really track towards college and career readiness. So, so this again gives a very tangible way to kind of instill some of that motivation in students to want to reach that next level of attainment. All right, I'm gonna pause there a minute, Cyan, before we talk about the hub. Um, questions related to the framework, applications of it. Yeah, we have someone here asking if there's a common list um, that's available or a breakdown of the skills and concepts that match up to each of the quantile levels. 
So there is a quantile map, and I'm, I do think we linked that in the resource guide, Cyan, but you and I can check, but I'm pretty sure the maps are linked. And those maps do tell, you know, they, they really are explicit and give you sort of all of those 550 skills and concepts and the quantile measures. And that, that is an easier way to look at it. Now in the maps, those are not tied back to standards. So if you're interested in seeing how those skills tie to standards, and then where the prerequisites and impending fall, you get that hierarchy within the hub. But we do just have kind of like a straightforward list if you're just looking at the discrete list of 550 skills. Great. Thanks, Mindy. We have another couple of questions, but I think that we can save them uh, for after the next sections. Perfect. OK, sounds good. So the next thing we want to talk about and make sure you leave here today is how do you use these measures? We've talked a lot about it. Um, but what tools and resources are available to help you actually bring meaning to these measures? So Metametrics has something called the Lexile and Quantile Hub. And in this hub are numerous tools for both Lexile and Quantile that are all free and immediately available to all educators in the state of California. And that's due to the partnership that Metametrics has with California. This is part of our agreement and it's offered to all of the districts at no cost. The important thing to remember, um, two things, I guess. The first is, in order to get there, the link is hub.lexile.com that you see on the screen. And remember, there's also links in Tom's um, and I think in the LPAC and CAST website as well. But you can go directly there. And if you go there to register, it is important that you register. And I can't stress enough, it's important that you register with your school district assigned email. Now, the reason for that is we have to be able to recognize you as a California educator so that we can grant you that premium access to all the tools. Otherwise, you're going to get in the hub and have some restrictions. So just make sure that you click the educator tab when you're registering, and then you use your school, not a personal email, and it should give you access to everything that is in the hub. Right. So what we wanted to do today is kind of talk about the different tools and resources for math on the quantile side that are available. And then I would highly encourage you to join us for the deep dive sessions that we have coming up uh, next week, where we'll, we'll go hands-on live into the hub. We'll demonstrate some of these tools and resources, really show some classroom applications of how to use them. So if you're interested in that, make sure you join us next week. We're just gonna do a high level review right now of, um, of the information and the tools that are available to you. Okay. So um, let's just start in, in, we have a new version of the hub coming. I do want to mention that too. So the new version isn't coming out until November. So you can go in today and use the hub as is. And the majority of all these tools and resources will all be transferred over into the new version. They're just going to look and feel a little bit different because the new version will have enhanced accessibility. So some of the tools had to undergo redesign to ensure that we were accessibility compliant. Um, and then one of the great things that also will be available is that the hub will now be optimized in November for use on a phone or a tablet or a computer. I think that's a huge improvement to you know, be able to use some of these things on the go. So I just wanted to mention that. Um, and in that new version, the, the tools and resources are going to be organized just like that. You'll see a tool drop down menu and a resource center drop down menu. So we're going to start today by talking about some of the tools. Um, and give you a little description of each of these so you can at least understand like what each of these tools do. Okay, so the math skills database, we used to have three separate math tools that we do, you'll see them today if you go in, but in November, they're gonna all be combined into one and that's math at home, math skills database and teacher assistant. And the reason these three tools eventually in November are gonna be combined into one is because they all pull from the same database of information. It's just the interface of how the information was presented was different. And so instead we wanted to just create one powerful tool that really took the best features from each of those tools and brought them together. So this tool, essentially what you can do is it gives you the ability as an educator to search by grade level standards, and once you select California and your standards document, your grade level, it will, you'll select the skill and then it'll show you those prerequisites and impending and focus skills that we talked about so that you can understand and see the scaffolding of the different levels of um, math understanding. So this is a really great one. This tool also gives you the ability to enter the quantile range of a class so that you can then look at those skills like we talked about entering the quantile range of the group or class you're working with and be able to see color coding change that will tell you whether those focus skills, 
prerequisite skills? Are they within the ability level of the students that you're about to teach? Are these skills actually above the level? Are they below the level? So it gives, it does that analysis for you as soon as you put in the range of your students. So lots of great functionality within those tools that we'll be able to show you next week. Um, career database and growth planner. I like to talk about these kind of together a little bit because the career database I mentioned earlier, this is essentially a database where Metametrics has done extensive research on, for quantiles and in math, we've researched over 400 Bright Outlook careers to identify the math demands of entry level into these careers. And so, you know, we've analyzed entry level tests, manuals, um, study materials, for these careers. And so we know the level of complexity for math skill that's required to at least start entering into these. So the career database allows an educator or a counselor to sit down with a student and to explore this, to pull up a career, to see what the quantile demand is and to use that to drive motivation with the student and hopefully do some goal setting. And so that's where the growth planner can be really helpful in forecasting a student's ability to meet that goal. Whatever that goal is that they set, maybe based on that career database, the growth planner allows you to enter several quantile measures that they've received over time, and it builds the trajectory and lets them know if they're going to meet that or if maybe they've got to put in some more work to really kind of change positively the trajectory of the growth path. So really powerful tools. On the resource side, in the resource center, there's a variety of materials, the grade level charts that we talked about that are based on national norm data. Um, those can be printed for parent-teacher conferences. Those are available um, today and they'll, and they'll be available in the resource center in the new version. There's a variety of thousands of instructional math resources, and those in, include things like videos and lesson plans and um, activities, all sorts of things that can either be used by a teacher or sometimes just having a child sit down at the computer because that's a particular resource that you liked. It was aligned to the lesson and you saved it so a student can work on that later. And then finally, the measures manager is a tool that can really help to sort of reconcile when we talked about, I think at the very beginning, how a student can receive anywhere from probably one to four different quantile measures in a given year. And sometimes that can be confusing, knowing which one is the one that you should place more weight upon. And so, you know, we would always say put a little more emphasis on measures that come from summative assessments versus interim, because those assessments are longer, they're more comprehensive in terms of standards coverage. Kids tend to take them a little more seriously. There's a little more testing protocol around them. But at the end of the day, sometimes this measures manager is really helpful in being able to input measures. It recognizes the assessments. You tell them the, the interim assessment that they were from, and then it can help um, give you a, a measure that can be utilized if there's, if there's questions between multiple measures. All right, and so I wanna leave you today in summary with just a few key takeaways before I turn it back over to Cyan. Um, first and foremost, we've talked a lot about the framework and the scale, and I hope that you leave today uh, really understanding that these measures are key in helping to gauge the degree of challenge between the skills being taught in a lesson, the materials being used, and the readiness of the student. Second, that you have access to this hub with amazing free tools and resources, and we just want to make sure you know how to access those tools and that you can use them to hopefully start using these measures in the classroom as soon as possible uh, and make these measures and this data actionable for you and your students and your families. Um, that hopefully you can start to use these measures to take a much more longitudinal view of student data and to really help students start to use these measures to set goals and to you know, monitor their progress over time and work towards college and career readiness. And then finally, um, just being able to communicate more effectively and tangibly with parents about student achievement and about ways that they can engage in learning from home um, as well as school. All right, and so Cyan, with that, um, I'm gonna turn it back over to you to talk about the dates and times of those next deep dive sessions. Yeah, thank you, Mandy. Um, so next week on October 2nd and October 3rd, we're actually hosting two more webinars, uh, one focused on Lexile and the other focused on Quantile. And in these uh, sessions, we will 
do a deeper dive into the actual tools in the hub and we'll be able to demonstrate for you those tools. We'll navigate the hub and then demonstrate the various tools that are available. So if you're interested in that and you're not yet registered, you can register by going to the upcoming and on-demand trainings page. I'll post that link in the chat again. There's so much on that page um, mm -hmm. and you'll be able to find the registration link there. Um, I had some questions uh, from folks about where to access yesterday's webinar. So if you're looking for the slides from yesterday where we spoke about Lexile, you can find it on that same page. Um, and then you will also find the recording for yesterday's webinar and today's webinar in about a week or so uh, on that same page. Um, we can move on actually to the, yeah, thank you. Um, we're gonna keep this slide up for a bit. Um, you know, we'd love your feedback on these webinars. It helps us improve our trainings. Um, so you can go ahead and scan this with your QR code and I'm actually going to drop the link into the chat as well. Give me just a moment. And if you have a moment to fill that out, uh, this is a combined survey for the uh, Lexel session yesterday and the Quantile one today. If you uh, completed uh, one yesterday, feel free to go ahead and complete it again for today's session. So we'll keep this up. And it looks like we actually answered a lot of the questions um, in the Q&A. We were able to get to those offline. Um, but Mandy, I just want to um, check back with you and see if there was anything that you wanted to add. No, I think that's it. Just encourage folks to listen to the deep dives or attend those if they can. I think the classroom examples will be really helpful in terms of better understanding the tools. So nope, if there's no more questions, I'm just looking there as well. Um, happy to, to stay on and answer if there is. Oh, I think maybe one just. Yep. And I will send, I'm going to post that upcoming and uh, on-demand trainings link if I can find it here one more time. Let's see. Give me one second. We'll keep folks on so that we can they can get the survey link and that web page. So again, that upcoming and on demand trainings web page has the slides for today for um the for yesterday's webinar as well. We have a resource guide, and in that resource guide, there is uh, links to all of the resources that Mandy spoke about today. Um, and there's also contact information there. So after this webinar, if you have questions that come up when you're navigating the hub, if you have any questions, um, there's contact information. If you want to uh, reach out to us, definitely please feel free to do so. Um, so again, you'll find the slides and the uh, resource guide on that page. You'll also find the recordings for yesterday's webinar and today's in about a week. Um, and then I also posted the survey link in the chat. It does look like we have one more question here. Yeah. It says, how can data be used for students in K through two? Are there quantile measures for those grades as well? Um, and I just, I, I can take this one really quickly, Mandy, but um, these measures are coming from, the Lexon quantile measures are coming from the smarter balanced um, for ELA and mathematics assessments. And so students with scores for those assessments are able to get these. Since uh, these assessments are not administered to students in K through two, uh, they are not receiving the Lexile and Quantile measures, at least from these assessments that we've mentioned today. Yeah, and that's 100% correct, Cyan. What I would add to that is on the reading side, a lot of districts do use screeners uh, you know, for reading at the K2 level, and there are a number of screeners that are linked to Lexile. There's fewer math screeners out there, but if you are from a district that happens to use a math screener, I would um, advise you to look at that list that we posted that lists all the different um, assessments that are linked to quantiles and Lexiles, because you may happen to find um, a math screener on there that maybe a particular district is using. So you wouldn't receive those measures as broadly as you said, Cyan, through one of these, you know, uh, SBEC assessments. But um, but there's possible there may be something else used at the school district that may report at that level. They just have to check the list. And uh, that list, I believe, of all the assessments available, I believe that's in the resource guide. If not, I also did post it in the chat okay. um, to find all of the assessments that report quantile measures. Great. And if not, we can always um, add it to the resource guide as well. Exactly. Sounds good. Okay. I think that's it. I don't see any other questions. Great. Thank you so much, Mandy. Okay. And Thanks, everyone. Yeah. Thank you, everybody. Have a great rest of your day.